Hello, Jennifer Bedrosian. How are you today? I'm good, Brent. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm very happy to have you with us today on Insight. Uh, I wanted to start off by basically asking uh, what the first thing was that caught your attention? What got you excited about the arts as a young person or as you were growing up? Tell me about the moment that you knew you wanted to be involved in the arts or dance in particular and, uh, and how that happened. Um, I was a gymnast starting at a really young age. I really only had ballet through my gymnastics teachers and uh, I really liked it. I enjoyed the floor the most, performing the dance part. And um, that kind of led me into when I got into high school, uh, my town was small. We didn't have dance studios or anything like that. Couldn't take class. So as I got into um, high school, I did song leading. So I got to learn a little bit more about dance and performing out in front of a huge crowd was my favorite thing to do is halftime. And so that bug started um, me wanting to take dance classes when I got into junior college. And then when I got to Cal Poly, I had a teacher tell me about this amazing studio, Pat Jackson's American Dance. And I met Pat Jackson and she invited me into the apprentice program because I was still just learning dance, really. And, but I had just didn't really start until I was 18 taking classes. So you're never too late to try something new is how I like to look at it. And um, she was so absolutely inspiring. We still do a shine circle today in honor of her and our program, and as well as all the North County programs because they've, we've all been taught by Pat. So we're all kind of like brothers and sisters connected, which is nice. Um, and so I think her love and passion for something bigger than herself is basically what made me want to continue to pursue this. I, I taught PE for several years, but when I had the opportunity to teach dance and now doing it every day, people say, oh, do you really love teaching? And I absolutely love teaching. And seeing the kids on stage now is what connects me every year. It's just getting to see them shine and, and appreciate the world in dance. So. so Jennifer, tell us, you said that you were a PE a teacher at the beginning. Uh, what got you into teaching? What made you choose that as your profession? My mom worked in a school district. She was an aide for 27 years and she used to bring books home and I would set them up and teach my stuffed animals. And I just, that's what I did as a pastime. I, I played teacher. And when I became um, a young adult trying to decide what to do for a career, I had coached multiple years in gymnastics. I taught, um, I did choreography for different dance, local dance performing uh, venues, and I just loved it. And I loved that moment when the light clicks in a student's eyes and they get it, and then they're excited about it. And um, I coached chair for many years as well. So all of those teaching moments kind of led me to the fact that I knew this is what I wanted to do. I could have gone into this, or I could have um, <clears throat> gone into accounting or business, and I just thought, this is... I, I just loved that moment. And so I wanted to continue to have that moment the rest of, you know, if you're going to make a career choice, you want to do something that you're going to be happy with. And it was never about the money. As you know, if you go into teaching, it's really <laughs> not about that. It's really just about um, the feeling that you get. And I want to continue that until I retire. And probably after. I, I see myself continuing in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, I do too. I can't imagine you uh, giving up the, the teaching bug. They, they say that teaching is a calling, and it's obviously yeah. uh, true that you got that calling here. I did, yes. So, Jennifer, as a teacher, uh, how is distance learning working for you in this situation that we're in with the epidemic? And uh, can you give us an example of an online lesson? Sure. Um, so I teach beginning, intermediate, and advanced dance at Paso High School. And for um, well, distance learning has been a struggle because I'm up and teaching the whole time, giving constant feedback. I don't sit. I, I'm never in front of a computer until it's the afternoon. And so this has been a difficult way for me to give my kids advanced in what they're doing. Um, right now, I have a couple different ways of teaching. One of them is through videotaping myself, doing counts of a dance and then doing it to music and then sharing it with the class and asking them to then record themselves and send it back to me so I can see that they're doing it because I have no way of, um, there's no proof that they are completing the assignments in dance unless they're sending me something throughout the week. I, I don't expect it every day. Um, another assignment has been asking them to choreograph specific pieces based on 
Um, our theme for the dance show was a journey. So I had them actually come up with music that represented their journey at the current moment and choreo do a choreo piece of choreography to it about 30 seconds. And so that was a wonderful time for me to reflect on how they were feeling currently during this time of distance learning. Um, and we're also looking at history. So looking at Bob Fosse and Alvin Ailey and uh, these dancers and these choreographers that we haven't really had time to be able to do during the school year. So it's, it's sort of a like reset and focus on some different um, ways to take a dance class. Like it's not just about the physical part, it's also about learning about the history and what, how we got to where we are now in dance. And I think it's been important for them to see that too. Sure. So tell me a little bit about what's been going on in, in the dance world at Paso High leading up to uh, our quarantine, our shelter in place. Tell me a little bit about what, you, I, know, I know that you direct uh, a competition dance team and lots of events and I know that uh, you made it all the way up to opening night of your kind of year-end showcase dance <laughs> performance. Can, can you tell me, kind of starting at the beginning, beginning of the year leading up to that moment, what was what was going on at Paso High Dance? Sure. Our fall season is basically focused on hip hop and we do football performances and sometimes we'll do a little performance here or there for us to perform at an event. Um, and that's that's that I have 45 students in my advanced dance class. And so we all get out on the football field and we have our jerseys and there's just a great energy and it's a good way to start the year because everyone just sort of gets to know each other really quickly. Um, and then at the, after that point, there's two different focuses. One is on the dance dance um, show, and this year it was called A Journey. Um, and so it was about everybody's different journey, so I think it was titled appropriately. But um, we worked on that, and the students uh, develop choreography plans. They turn them in, and I give them feedback, and then they develop their, their dance a little more. They give me how many students they want in their dance, what kind of costumes we help go design together. We work on um, designing these um, lighting and et cetera, just to get them prepared to be a choreographer outside of my, my program. And, um, and then they work on numbers as well as myself. Uh, we had 26 numbers in our show this year that the students started working on in the beginning of December. And um, so they've worked really, really hard. And we also have a competition team that's at the same time after school, um, a couple times a week. And we go to a competition convention. And as a high school, being the only high school out of about 300 studios, um, we do really well. And so I'm really proud of them. They, they're an outstanding group of students. We took 10 students this year. Last year we had 11. Um, and it's been a, a really great eye opener for me in the outside world of dance. I'm so locked into like, the local arts, but getting to see what other programs are doing and kind of like the future and, and getting to take dance classes from my favorite teachers. Like I get starstruck when I'm at the event. So I know it's been a really great moment for our kids and it's fundraised through our program. So the kids don't pay. I get local sponsors in, in Paso and who donate a lot of money and get us to these events and pay for our costumes. And so we're very lucky. It's, it's um, a big, undertaking and we did not get to go to LA and we were going to go visit UCLA and USC and those dance programs and see UCSB um, and see a professional show that was going to be our second piece we wanted to do an academic piece to that um, program and we did not get to do that this year so that was unfortunate um, and then we hit our dance show and we did get to do one night of the dance show it's three nights and I told the kids when we were in our shine circle this is the gift that we get to go on tonight and there may not be another show. So I want them to perform like it's their last night every night until it's their last night. And um, they performed the best opening show I've ever done. I cried 10 times because I just kept thinking this is the only time I'm probably get, gonna get to see them. My family didn't even get to see it. And it was really, they were just, they, they really were brilliant choreographers this year. They really thought about the theme and connected it. Um, Friday, I got a phone call at three o'clock school gets out at 302 that my show was canceled and that school was closing. So I had to get on the, the announcement um, over the loudspeaker and announce to the whole school at 302 that uh, the dance show was going to be closed for the rest of the weekend and could I have the dancers come to the dance room and pick up all of their things. 
at 302, the show was going to open at seven. So it was really hard. The kids were like in show mode and they were so proud of what they had done and their families hadn't seen them. Many of the senior parents had not seen the show because they were going Friday and Saturday night and we were filming it on Friday night. So, so many things, so, so much sadness. I think as far as that, I, it, I wish it could have been videotaped. I had some clips that um, just from rehearsals that aren't, you know, super clean, but they're them practicing the routines so you get an idea. Um, and then my beginning intermediate show was supposed to be held on April 22nd, and that was also canceled. So those kids were working hard towards their show and weren't able to be able to do that either. And uh, yeah, there's, there's some, um, are we gonna get to do it? And my biggest concern with doing the show in the summer is that they're not fit in that, in that sense anymore. Some of the students were doing 10 numbers and I'm worried about injury, trying to push themselves to get back into shape in a week or two to get to the point where they were had been practicing for months to be and I that would be my concern about sure. just going back and doing it oh throwing it together but you can't throw dance together so yeah I think we're we're kind of at a loss at that point which is really disappointing I still hear those songs and I have to change them because it makes me sad to, <laughs> to hear songs from the dance show <laughs> well speaking of the dance show I want to thank you uh, for helping us arranged to have one of your students here with us. She's gonna be talking about what she was going through that uh, opening night of the dance show and, uh, and the subsequent days leading up to now. Uh, so thank you very much for doing that for us. And now it is my pleasure to welcome one of our very own Slow County students from Paso Robles High School, Ms. Priscilla Berry. Hi Priscilla, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing good, how are you? I'm great, thank you so much for being with us today. I know that uh, the audience will be very happy to hear your perspective on what has been such a crazy time in our history uh, dealing with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and just all the changes this has made in our life. And Dr. Ms. Vrosian and I have been talking a lot about what happened in the school year leading up to this point. But what I'd like to know is, what were you doing? What were you feeling? What, what, how did you hear about the, the shutdown, the quarantine, the shelter in place? And uh, what was going through your mind when that happened? And then, uh, and then after that, tell me kind of what you've been doing since then. Okay. Um, so it was Friday, I think like March 14th or so. And it was going to be our second night of dance show. So I have a reduced schedule and I went home at lunch because I was going to go take a nap and then get ready for dance show. So I woke up from my nap and I was doing my hair and started doing my makeup. and got a text from all of our dance officers because I am one of the co-presidents and I got a text from our group saying that dance show was canceled that night and that our school was possibly going on lockdown or not lockdown but um like shutting down for a while so I immediately I got really sad at first because I mean, I'm glad I had the first night of dance show because I am a senior. This is my last dance show. I've been in it for four years, so it was really exciting, but it was also really hard to hear that because we worked so hard for it. We worked months for that, um, but I mean, maybe this happened for a reason and this is going to change the world in a good way, hopefully. And so now I am doing online schooling with through the school and Ms. Pedrosian, my dance teacher, we have signed up with CLI Studios, which is an online dance program. And there are teachers from around the country um, teaching classes online that we can take. And so we're staying active, still dancing, still having fun, even though it is online. And we send videos in of ourselves dancing to Ms. Pedrosian so she can see us and see that we're still doing okay, even though it is a hard time and just trying to keep up the motivation. So, yeah. Well, good, yeah, I know. I was very happy to hear that you guys at least got your opening night in because I know how hard you worked to put those together. Um, just devastating to lose the end of the of the run and also the, the, the rest of your senior year, you know, since yeah. um, in another episode, we were talking to Mrs. Goodnow about their drama production and not even getting to do one one night. So um, I think you're right in saying that you're, it was it was fortunate that you got to at least do that one night and uh, and some some hopefully some good will come out of there'll be a silver lining in this dark cloud. We'll say that. 
Um, so thank you for talking about school. And thank you for talking about the performance. Uh, what what has been going on as far as 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 far as your personal life? Is, are you completely are you seeing are you able to see any of your friends at all? Are you uh, completely shut in with your family? Who are you sheltering at home a place with? Um, so I am, I'm with my family, my little brothers and my grandparents who I live with. And, um, we've been actually getting closer because I'm normally not a person that stays home very often. Like I'm always out either working, dancing at school, hanging out with friends or doing something. I'm always out. And so this was kind of a, I feel like a reality check for me because I'm never normally at home. So it's kind of nice to relax and actually like sleep a good eight to 10 hours for once and get a break from work and just all social life pretty much. Um, I have been able to see there's a couple of my friends who are parents like we shelter at place and I'm allowed to only hang out with them and their parents only allow them to hang out like with me. So I have a couple friends so I'm not completely just like isolated at home. And we've gone on bike rides, hikes. Um, we went to the beach a couple times before everything got closed and just kind of enjoying nature more as well. Like seeing how I feel like we've taken a lot of advantage of that, not just me, but like the whole world mm -hmm. and being able to just sit back and see what's going on and see like I've read things, how the air is cleaner. There's so much positive going on with us even though we are focusing a lot on the negative but I've just been trying to keep a positive mindset for myself thinking like oh maybe this is a good thing I can focus on um a, like finish my college applications and decide where I want to go decide what's going to happen in the future for me and rather than having all that stress was that was piling up now it's just kind of a relaxation and like realization of my life and it's kind of nice actually I didn't think of it this way until a couple weeks into it. <laughs> Priscilla tell us a little bit about what your college plans are. What, uh, what, what places are you applying for and what do you intend your major to be? Okay so last week I actually finally decided because I was going back and forth with a couple universities in Texas and a couple in Arizona and I finally decided last week with my family, we ruled out like weather because I know there's lots of tornadoes and crazy hail storms and different things like that in Texas, which probably isn't the thing for me because I don't like cold weather as much either. In Arizona, um, I've grown up, I, I go to Arizona every year because my grandpa's sister lives there and then his aunt and uncle also lives there. So I have lots of family there. And I've been through monsoons, which happen a lot during summer, which is kind of crazy, but I love it there. So I end up going with ASU, which is Arizona State University, and I'm majoring in biology and minoring in criminal justice. And then I'm also trying to minor in dance. So we'll see how that works, but I'm going <laughs> to stay very busy <laughs> and I'm excited. So yeah, we're just... I talked to like my guidance counselor and we're figuring out all like financial aid, where I'm going to stay, all of that. But it's really exciting. Well, that's great to hear. Uh, I wish you all the best in, uh, in pursuing your degree at ASU. And, uh, and the good news is with your foundation at Pastor Robles High School, you're a lifelong learner and lover of dance no matter what you do. Yes. No, definitely. I will definitely be coming back and visiting Ms. Pedrosian in the dance program because I spent my four years in it. I be was one of the first people on our competition team we started to last year and continued this year. And I was an officer for two years. Like the dance program has really like shaped me into who I am. Not just about dance. It's about everyone getting to be in a family and loving each other and really getting to know Miss B. Like Miss B was probably my mentor through high school and I'm very grateful I got to have that so well that is great well we really appreciate you being here with us today spending a little time sharing your thoughts with us and uh, I wish you nothing but the best in the future thank you so much <laughs> well Jennifer it has been really really fun spending time with you it's been a while since I've seen you and uh, I, I'm very very 
impressed by your kids, your program. Thank you so much for everything you do. Uh, thank you once again for bringing Priscilla in to talk to us. That was amazing. Is there anything you'd like to share in closing with the uh, San Luis Obispo County? I do. I really want to say that I appreciate how great our district has been. Not a lot of districts support the arts as much as ours. We have a developmental program that starts in the elementary school level and it goes all the way through high school. And many of my students are in our program for four years and it's just wonderful to see that growth. And our community has been outstanding at donating, sharing support, and showing up to the shows year after year. People that aren't connected to any students just come because they love what the kids are doing and putting on stage and they believe in us. So I feel so fortunate and so thankful and so grateful. And I appreciate you having me on your program so I can share what we do. And I hope that we, we can get some new people to our program next March for our Dance Dance Show. Well, I will second that. I've, I've seen your dance concerts. They are absolutely amazing. Uh, I wish you and your students the best of luck when we resume after all this craziness and uh, best of luck to you and your family staying at Thank home. You. Enjoy that family time together while you have it. I know that that's been uh, very important for you. And uh, once again, just thank you so much for joining us on the Slow County Arts Collaborative Insight. Thank you so much.